Congratulations! Just released scientific reports of UAP locations, hotspots. Welcome to ESN, your source for everything news, views, and reviews that you can use. So buckle up, Buttercup, for this edition of Rapid Fire, because we have breaking news to share with you. Episode 4. All right, let's jump right in, shall we? Here we go. This is the paper you've all been waiting for. An environmental analysis of public UAP sightings and Skyview potential. This is scientific reports. I'm going to leave the link specific in the video description box. Now, there are a multitude of sightings every single day that are reported through various agencies. And in this article, we're going to look at two specific images. This is the first one that I wanted to show you. Look at all of these reported sightings. Sightings of unidentified flying objects or unidentified anomalous phenomena have been reported throughout history. Given the potential security and safety risks they pose, as well as scientific curiosity, there's an increasing interest in understanding what these sightings reports represent. We approach this problem as an important one to the human experience, and that can be examined through a geographical lens. What local factors may increase or decrease the number of sighting reports? Well, using the Bayesian regression method, we test hypothesis based on variables representing sky view potential, light pollution, tree canopy, cloud cover, and the potential for objects to be present in the sky. Aircraft and military installations. The dependent variable includes over 98,000 public reported UAP sightings in the United States during the 20 year period from 2001 to 2020. The model results find credible correlations between variables that suggest people see more phenomena when they have more opportunity to. The analysis was one of few investigations of UAP sighting reports at a national scale, providing context to help examine individual reports, given that these objects are labeled unidentifiable in the personal sense, there are many natural and or human-based explanations worth exploring. This is fascinating because there's been growing interest by the United States government in UAP phenomena. Now, given the new focus on potential security threats, and the operational safety risks posed by these objects, the UAP task force was initiated on August 4th, 2020, and the task force had a limited scope, authority and resources to address the issue and was temporary in its duration. The Deputy Secretary of Defense gave direction to transition the UAP task force into the Airborne Object Identification and Management Synchronization Group, which is AOIMSG, and this was November 23rd, 2021. Congressional legislation, however, overtook that direction and today's all domain anomaly research office, Arrow, was established July 20th, 2022. As the single authoritative UAP office with the DOD and tasked with leading and synchronizing a whole of government approach, the US federal departments and agencies to detect, identify and attribute objects of interest in or near military installations, operating areas, training areas, special use airspace, and other areas of interest, and as necessary to mitigate and associated threats to safety of operations and national security. This includes anomalous unidentified space airborne submerged and transmedium objects. Wow, transmedium objects, you say? Supporting these efforts, this research team explores spatial patterns of publicly reported UAP sightings. Analogous to UFO sighting reports, in this research from an open source online data set. In the public 2021 Director of National Intelligence report, research on UAP sightings reports between 2004 and 2021 leaves most of its 144 government-based reports unexplained. Due to limited data, only one sighting report was explained with high confidence and was found to be a deflating balloon. Of course, it's always a deflating balloon or a swamp gas. This time it really was though. Maybe. The follow-up 2022 DNI report indicates the number of governmental sourced reports rose to 510, with nearly half still unexplained. That's substantial. The DNI states that there is no single explanation for these UAP with potential sources including clutter, commercial drones, national security threats, and other unexplained phenomena. Other early incarnations of government-based UFO research efforts, we go back to the project signed in 1948, Project Grudge, and of course, Project Blue Book led by Dr. Alan Hynek in the 50s and 60s, and the following Honden report funded by the U.S. Air Force and conducted at the University of Colorado ended with about 5% of unidentified sightings. UAP research is often inconclusive, and our ability to explain these events seems to have been less easily resolved as our sensor technology has advanced 
and our air activity has increased. Here we ask for three foundational research questions. Here we ask three foundational research questions. What is the viability of publicly offered data on UAP sighting reports? Are there credible spatial patterns to these reports? And if so, can these patterns be explained by physical and or built environmental factors? To answer these questions, we use UFO sighting report data from the National UFO Research Center. We model the total count of these reports over a 20-year period from 2001 to 2020 using environmental explanatory variables, light pollution, cloud cover, tree canopy cover, airports, and military installations. This model is intended to represent both the available view of the sky as well as the potential for airborne objects. We hypothesize that factors limiting visibility will be negatively correlated with sighting reports and factors related to air traffic will be positively correlated or simply that people will report sightings of UAPs where they have the most opportunity to see them. To our knowledge, this is the first attempt to understand how spatial variation in reports is linked to environmental variables. This analysis represents one of few attempts to examine this phenomenon at the national level and offers a starting point for a similar approach to be applied to U.S. government data on UAP activity to help identify possible sources. So we can go back to, looks like 1945, with research on UAP sightings. Let's go to this spot right here, materials and methods, public UAP sightings report data. This research uses data from the National UFO Reporting Center online. It was formed in 1974, and the center's primary function over the past four decades has been to receive, record to the greatest degree possible, corroborate, and document reports from individuals who have been witness to unusual, possibly UFO-related events. Now look at this. Look at all of these reports from 2001 to 2020. We focus on the Contra minus U.S. from 2001 to 2020. For ease of interpretation and because the tree canopy data discussed below are only available for the coastal region of Alaska, and this reduces the number of reported sightings to 98,724. So about 100,000 sightings in 20 years. Even if 99.999% of these are not spacecraft, or strange phenomena in the sky. You're saying we have a chance. That's a lot. So for analysis, we aggregate to the country level across this time period for spatial continuity. For all spatial studies, the modifiable aerial unit problem is always a consideration while calculating and analyzing sighting reports might be less biased if aggregated to equally sized cells. Estimating population within such cells requires a series of assumptions. Also, since these reporting events are relatively rare, counties provide large enough areas for a meaningful aggregation of points. Our temporal range is selected such that entries are assumed to be relatively recent events and not generated from memories decades ago. Internet access to report a sighting would be more possible beginning about 2000 and is likely responsible for the increase in sighting reports over time. Furthermore, from 2000 to 2010, especially and in rural areas, a potential reporting bias exists due to lessened internet access in those areas. A timeline of reported sightings for the study period is provided in figure two with a marked peak in reports between 2012 and 2014, followed by a sharp drop between 2015 and 2018. In the spatial sciences data, like these are typically referred to as a volunteered geographical information. VGI are volunteered either knowingly or unknowingly by individuals, typically with the assistance of location-enabled digital tools. Like other crowdsourced data, there is little hope for assurance of quality for VGI. It's a lot of sightings. And if you look at the, the East Coast here, and up in the Northwest in the Puget Sound area, then South in Oregon, the California coast, a lot of activity in Colorado, Northern Colorado. Definitely got some hot spots out there by the Great Lakes. Looks like up in Minnesota. Down in Florida.
Here's the timeline. Okay, let's take a look at the hot spots now. You have a ton of hot spots on the West Coast, all the way up into the Northwest, Idaho, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, and then in the Northeast there. Now, the data that supports the findings of the study are available online from the National UFO Reporting Center at nufrc.org. These data sets are not geocoded. Geocoded data is available from the authors upon request. Let's take a look at this website real quick. So this is the National UFO Reporting Center. I've seen at least two UFOs. I saw a rod-shaped UFO twice in Utah. I think it might have been the same one over a period of a little over a week in north of Salt Lake and then by Moab. The second time I saw it, I was with a coworker, and that was the week later on the weekend. And then Chris and I saw a metallic orb in Pagosa Springs during the daytime, about 50 feet off the ground at the 11 o'clock position. So there's a lot of weird stuff out there, but this isn't just spacecraft. There are so many different variables, and I would say the majority of UFOs can be explained. I wonder if we could look at the gallery here. Oh, yeah, look at this. Bakersfield, Vietnam, Yelm, Washington. Wow, look at that. Tucson, Arizona. Like a com computer animation of what they saw. It's got to be. An X. Some cool stuff, man. Yeah, a lot of these must just be artist renditions. That's pretty dang cool. Look at that. Wow. Some neat looking stuff. A lot of these triangles are seen. What is this? Here. There it is again, that thing in Ohio. What the heck is that? Looks like a black sheet of paper, but wow, I don't know. That's pretty that's pretty weird. Thank you for watching. Hit the bell for all notifications. Check back daily. We do updates every single day. And you know, here at ESN, IC News, we like to question everything. We recommend you question everything. Think for yourselves. Do your own research. Be prepared, not scared. And be the change the world needs to see.